Hi everybody, Norris Kruger, Boise, Idaho, uh, clearly uh, opposite hemisphere from you guys. I am honored uh, to be here. For those who are watching this and, and are not in Santiago, Chile, um, this is uh, a little talk that I was invited to give to UNIVOC, which is a uh, UN-connected global conference on how to integrate apprenticeship training and education into technical and vocational schools, which is their sweet spot. Now, before I get any further, I want you all to write this, these words down. Students are our secret weapon. Students are our secret weapon. We're going to come back to that in just a second. What Ellen McCallum and Bantani Education asked me to talk about were ecosystems and partnerships, and I'm going to rip on that a little bit and talk about entrepreneurial resource acquisition and give you an example of that. But uh, you've got some slides there. The first thing that should blow you away is that you have an unfair advantage in terms of building your entrepreneurial community. Um, on the slides you're, you're looking at, there is a link to a thing I wrote for the National Association for Community College Entrepreneurs who are doing brilliant work uh, here in, in, in North America, that the unfair advantage that you guys have in terms of growing the ecosystem. However, it begs the question of what is a makes a healthy entrepreneurial ecosystem. Those of you who know me know I'm a huge Brad Feld fan. Brad Feld is uh, one of the architects of the Boulder, Colorado legendary tech ecosystem and author of, his, of the 19, 2012 book, Startup Communities. Brad looked at successful, healthy entrepreneurial ecosystems around the globe and found four things that they had in common. Forget the numbers, forget all the statistics. What are the four things? And number one with a bullet was that it's bottom-up entrepreneur-led, that the activities are being driven by the entrepreneurs, not by the institutions, that you're, look, a healthy community is, is a network, a network of networks, Yes, there are powerful institutions, and yes, there's lots of top-down and hierarchies, but they only work insofar as they help the support and reinforce and nurture the bottom-up entrepreneurial act, uh, entrepreneur-led activities. Second, inclusive, that it's got to be all the entrepreneurs and all the people engaged with them. Entrepreneurs, future entrepreneurs, past entrepreneurs, they're champions and allies. Not just high-tech, not just low-tech, everybody. Rallying points. This is a particularly good one for uh, technical and vocational schools because they have the opportunity to be a rallying point. What can we rally around to say, all right, in my community, the entrepreneurial ecosystem is best known for X, Y, and Z. In Boulder, Colorado, it was Techstars. The invention of that crystallized so much in the community. The fourth thing, think long term that, and you guys are in it for the, the long term. Silicon Valley really got started in the 1950s. It's older than I am. Anyway, so what are these secret weapons, these unfair advantages? First is, of three, is deep immersion, deep engagement, deep co-immersion in the community. And what, and, and what I mean by that is that it's not just you're embedded in the community, but the community is embedded in you. There is this, this wonderful set of complex interactions between you, your students, the students' families, whatever, with the community, not just even the economic community. It's, the lines have, are, are, real, are truly blurred. Second key is most of your programs are already obsessed with deep experiential learning, that you are focused heavily on a constructivistic learning. This is not behavior, this is learning that changes how you think, problem-based, project-based, powerful tools that change not just what you know, but how you think. This is the entrepreneurial mindset you hear so much about changing how they see the world, how they process information, how they make decisions, how they act on those decisions uh, is very different. 
and this is what you're building with uh, with your programs. You're already doing this, just as you're already engaged with the community. It's just about going a little bit deeper. The third piece is one that, that most of you have, and that's a commitment to true assessment. Not just punitive, let's count the beans and decide who won, but developmental feedback. How, what, what are we, what is changing? What, what needles are moving? What needles are not? What can we learn about that? How can we grow from that? And I think those three things, that deep co-immersion commitment to, absolute commitment to experiential learning and commitment to developmental assessment are, we've got three weapons that most institutions, including higher ed, can't really do. Now, Ellen asked me to give him an example, and this is one from the, the Deep South of the U.S. that was a great joy. You have a, a state whose school system were uh, in absolutely dire straits. Many of them needed to be turned around and to get administrators who were capable of turning around those schools was twofold. One is they didn't have the right skills, and two, you couldn't say the word turn around because that sounds bad. But they could say social innovation, social entrepreneur. Oh, everybody bought that. So we created an alternate certification program for school administrators where they would learn to think entrepreneurially, to act entrepreneurially. And that was part of my uh, my joy was, was doing that for a couple years, going down and, and working with them. There were two great examples of what I ponderously labeled entrepreneurial resource acquisition which is basically how do you get resources when you can't afford them? You go, you got to figure out how to get them somehow. And the only way is to create a value proposition for others. Two great examples we have. One is um, there's a, a chain of stores in the in that part of in the southern U.S. called Piggly Wiggly. Yep, Piggly Wiggly. And a teacher was saying, oh, well, that she was going to go to, goes down to the Piggly Wiggly before school starts and talks to them and figures out what could the Piggly Wiggly donate to the school to help the kids. The stores want to help the kids, no matter how bad economic times are. They want to find ways to help them. But it was just not very satisfying. So flip the script. Um, my idea, which uh, could have been disastrous, but fortunately worked out, was you send the teacher and the students to go to the Piggly Wiggly. The students and the managers figure out what is it that the students can do for the store. And some of the things I heard like um, gave me a pause, but it worked. And think about how that ripples onward. The more they do that, the more of these Piggly Wiggly stores get involved the more other stores get involved. They're all learning from each other and coming up with these great business models, for lack of a better, innovations where it's a win-win-win. It's, it's best. Remember what I said, students are our secret weapon. The other example was one that my host didn't even know I did. One night, uh, instead of going to him, my hotel room and checking email and watching ESPN. I went off to the local tech startup, uh, tech meetup for tech entrepreneurs, and dragged some of the students along. These poor students are like, what? They didn't have, well, they didn't have anything else to do either. They didn't want to do homework. <clears throat> so we went to the tech meetup, and the teachers are going, but no one's going to talk to us. You know exactly what happened. As soon as they came through the door, they were swarmed by the entrepreneurs. Those, those teachers did not pay for a drink all night. Everybody wanted to know, what can we do to help you? What can we do to help your schools? What can we do to help the kids? Now, they really couldn't take, you know, primary school students to, you know, to a, a beer fest, but... Uh, you open the door once you start engaging and and accepting the win wins that that surface. You're on your way. Anyway, I, I, I sort of recap. We are looking at the secret weapons that are students, 
but you've got your own secret weapons being a TV ET that you are better than at almost any other institution in your community at not only being engaged but being and being immersed but being co-immersed with that entrepreneurial community that can certainly benefit you second that you can you there's probably nobody better at experiential learning there's certainly nobody more committed to that in most most communities people talk a good game but and third they for most of you your commitment to developmental assessment what is actually changing if I gave them a test on the entrepreneurial mindset what facets of that mindset have changed and what haven't what can we learn from that and so let me close with my what I started with remember I said students are our secret weapon what I'd like each of you guys to do is I hope by now that you've written it in your own language, however it is in Spanish, Portuguese, French, whatever. That, I gotta tell you, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm an educator, I'm a scholar, but yeah, I'm pretty much an entrepreneur. And that's really important part of who, who I am, you know, to under, understand me. And I think I would love to know down the road. I'd like you to all this, you've got my contact information. Tell me, what are you doing to be co-immersed? What are you doing to uniquely with experiential learning and how you are going to, us, how you are assessing that developmentally? Because I've got plenty to learn. If I've learned anything, I need to learn from you guys. Please help me. And let me close with one final request. I'd like you all, when this thing ends, I want, this video ends, I want you to stand up and yell at the top of your lungs as loud as you can in English or your own language, students are our secret weapon. Take care, everyone. Um, I'm Norris Kruger. Uh, despite a PhD, I actually, I'm still an entrepreneur at heart. And I'm so honored to be here. I wish I could be there. Oh, I, I would be remiss. One final thing. Startup Chile rocks. Take care, everybody.